reality is the Ravens look like they were scared and the Chiefs look battle tested. The Chiefs just literally put those guys in a headlock and literally jumped the life out of them. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. You got a two team, the duo right here. D Wade Braun is in the building. Jalen Brunson. Now, mind, they don't got another one over there, but y'all get the y'all get the drift. Y'all get the drift. Magic, James Worthy. Well, we don't want to do magic either because we don't we don't move like that. But yeah, y'all, y'all get what we're saying. This is this is this is y'all favorite duo right here on the show tonight. How you doing? I'm good, bro. I'm good. And how are you, bro? Man, I'm great. I mean, I will flip this around so you could see it, but my hair a little jacked up. But my Lakers just won with no AD, no Bron, uh-huh. and they get the dub. AR-15 went crazy. Crazy. d double-double. Shoot, Jackson Hayes, you know what time it is. He played uh-huh. well. He saw, uh-huh. he saw LeBron tweet, so he he showed up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He actually showed up tonight. <laughs> but that tweet, you don't know what that means. You don't know if it means he about to go or if Brian's on the way out or if, you know, the supporting cast on the way out. You have no idea. You have none. So and those guys played like they like their lives depended on it, like their L.A. lives depended on it, you know? They, they know. They might, after that New York game, whenever the last road game is, they might not be back on that plane back to. Right. No, for real. Back to L.A. For real, Before though. we even get to the football, because there's a lot of football, I just just that game just now. I don't know if you got to see the, <clears throat> the highlights of it. Mm-hmm. What does this say? Like, cool, the Lakers won. That that's great. I'm a Lakers fan, so of course I'm happy and of course ecstatic because they beat the Celtics. So that's always good. That's a forever rival. But the Celtics considered the best team in the league all, right. all season, and then they lose a game like this. No Bron, no AD. But me, it's like I, it gives me question marks. Can we really trust the Celtics to actually go and win it? I I, I feel the same way. Oh boy, I feel the same way. Um, you know, I feel the same exact way. So for me, looking at the Celtics over the years, it's been the same questions with them historically, right? Like, I mean, Jason Tatum's performance just fluctuates. I don't know how a team. They expect to win a championship when your star player's performance fluctuates so much game to game. You know what I mean? And then Jalen Brown, you know, couldn't go left last year. And I don't think he's really resolved it. I haven't watched him much, so I don't want to speak, you know, Celtics fans be on my my behind in the comments because I'm, you know, maybe he is going left all of a sudden. But, um, you know, I I just feel like those two guys are very inconsistent, you know, and and they're the head of the snake and they lead this, they lead the charge for your team. You know, on any given night, they can be off. And in the playoffs, we've seen that happen. We've seen that rear its ugly head. Plus, they take a ton of threes that make up for their basketball team. Um, so it's just one of those things where, you know, I'm not entirely sure, you know, what we can expect from them, um, you know, on a night-to-night basis. So I, I wonder about, um, you know, what we're going to get from that team when it, when it matters because – the performance can just be questionable at times. The coaching obviously can be questionable too. He's very reliant on three ball. He's very reliant on Jason Tatum trying to play hero ball down the stretch. And, you know, you're going to get Chris Dasperzingis uh, and also getting J- Drew Holiday, which are two great signings. It doesn't necessarily solve that problem when the, when the game's in the line. You know, you're going to go to a guy like, you know, Jalen Brown and say, hey, bail us out. Bail us out of this mess, right? And it, he has shown us on multiple occasions that he's going to come up small. And so I, you know, can we trust them? Do I trust them? No, I, I don't. I think that the East is wide open because of it. Obviously, Joel Embiid tore his meniscus, so we don't even know what the outlook on him is if he can come back this season. I don't. I didn't see them rule him out for the rest of the year, so I guess they, they're holding out hope that he'll be ready by the playoffs or middle of the playoffs or whatever. But you can pretty much rule out the Sixers. They're not. They're not going to be a heavy hitter. So now I, I think like the Knicks who are surging at the right time and really playing great basketball and are a move away. You know they have a chance to really make some noise, get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and they they would really ruffle the, the, the Celtics' feathers, give them a hard time in, in a seven game series. So this is a this is a tough year. I mean, this is a, there's a lot of parity in the East. You don't know who could win it all. Um, there are teams you can rule out, but 
I think the Knicks have a chance to really make some noise. I know I'm bringing them up out of nowhere, but they're a team that they're they're a rising team that can really give a team like the Celtics a hard time with OG, all the wing defending, the defending they have. Um, they they have a chance. Hey, I'm glad you brought up the Knicks before I even talk about them. To your point, Tatum, eight for twenty one tonight, five or ten from three, twenty three point seven rebounds. Jalen Brown, four of twelve, zero of three from three point, eight rebounds, seven assists, and eight points as a team. Sixteen for forty-eight yep. from the three point. Put the balls down too. So I just diagnosed them. I just diagnosed that basketball team without even watching the game. I, I didn't watch the second of the game, and I just told you it was just probably because Jason Tatum played bad because he disappears. It's probably because Jalen Brown played bad because he disappears and can't go left. And they take a, too many threes as a team. Missoula wants to play that way and take a million threes. I told you that without even watching the game. And I was right about everything I just said. And I didn't even look at the box score. You know what I mean? They're predictable. When, they, when they're bad, it's very predictable. So it just it, it's so obvious what's wrong with the basketball team. They need to mix up their plan of attack. Um, it's a philosophical problem from the, top, from the top down, where the way that they want to get up all these threes, I know analytics is king, but – you're going to want to get some shots at close to the basket, draw some fouls, get to the free throw line, and mix up your attack, especially when guys aren't making shots. But they live and die by that three ball, and they live and die by Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And you're going to die sometimes. And you'll die enough times to not get to the, to the NBA Finals or get there and come up short. You know, pick your poison. That's the way I see it. Um, so we keep talking about how they all have all this time with those two guys leading the charge because they're young. But before you know it, they'll be older, and their time will run out. It's just the way the NBA works. It's unforgiving. You know what I mean? The window's not that big. They keep they keep thinking the window is big because, oh, yeah, right. they're under 30. But right. trust and believe. When you got teams like the Knicks on the rise, yeah, that, that window is pretty tight. Now, Shams just came out, literally like five minutes before, just came out saying that the reports of the torn meniscus isn't confirmed by the 76ers. Whether it's confirmed or not, the man's is injured. This is expected of Joel Embiid. Unfortunately, he's going to get injured at some point. It is what it is. I don't know if we could really say that he's in tip-top shape right now this season. He's had a great season, MVP-type season, but is he really in tip-top tier shape? I don't know if we can say that. But I think that opens up the door because I don't, I don't care. Philly, without Joel Embiid, they're like nine and sixteen this year. They're not. They might slip into a playing team if he's out for a month or two. Honestly, right. if Joel Embiid is out for that long, Jalen Brunson, is it time to give him some MVP love? Because Joel Embiid, even if he didn't get injured, he's going to miss it anyway. Because he's he's going to miss that sixty-five game minimum anyway. Jalen Brunson for MVP talks. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think de- I think he definitely is more in that kind of those conversations. Julius Randle's been out, and he, he got he'll be out for a while with that separated shoulder, which is going to be a little bit tricky um, because they let the, the ligaments heal, so it'll, it'll take time. It's not simple just popping his shoulder back in. And in spite of his injury, in spite of him being out, Jalen Brunson's picking up the slack and they're winning games regardless. They won tonight. They won the night before. <laughs> they've won since he's they've won every game since he's been out. They're on a nine game winning streak. I think it is now. Um, they're playing great basketball, and just because of Jalen Brunson, he's the head, head of that snake, and he makes that engine go for them, and, and he's been phenomenal all year. He should have been an all-star starter. He was robbed. Damian Lillard did not deserve to be an all-star starter. I will I will die on that hill. Um, what a joke that, that that's where we where things ended up, um, but he deserved to be a starter, and he's going to get into the MVP conversation because he's going to have this team playing great basketball, and as the team like the Sixers fall because of the injury, um, they're going to rise. They're going to rise into a top three seed if they're not already a top three seed. I think they were top four last time I checked. So it's going to be interesting to see them rise. And as they rise and as he continues to play well and stack good performance on good performance, now you got 40 points, beat the Indiana Pacers with Halliburton out there. You're, you're going to start to hear more and more noise about him being in the MVP conversation, being an MVP dark horse. So absolutely. he He's a phenomenal player. He's a superstar. I, I, I'm there. I, I, told, I told some of my next friend buddies uh, from, that I've been known for a long time, I told him the same thing. He is, a, he is a, a guy who's a superstar. We can classify him that way for sure. So, yes, yes. Yeah, they're the number three seed right now, 32-17, nine-game winning streak, nine and one over the last ten games. I like what I see from the Knicks. 
this oh. is probably the best that they've ever been. And I think low key, like we mentioned, because the East is wide open. I don't know if they're beating any teams in the West, but yeah. this is probably what this is like that year where they made it to the finals, where it was the lockout year. I think this is the type of year again because the East is so wide open. I don't trust Boston. Milwaukee, we already know they are not to be trusted, especially since they hired Doc Rivers, who they're 0 and 2 since Doc mm -hmm. has came over and he has mm -hmm. already started the throwing the players under the bus. Doc ain't going to take no responsibility. They lose the last game. What does he do? I expected Dame to be more aggressive. Blaming the players again. <laughs> Oh, boy. We already saw oh, what he boy. did to Ben and his confidence. Hey, Bucks is stuck with him, too, because you know mm -hmm. you can't fire him now, too, and try to get another coach. That's going to be no. – that's no. more money just out the window. Yep. yep. So I like, I like the Knicks this year. I like what I'm seeing from them. I think this is the year. This is probably going to be their best year to try to make it to the finals and do something. Yeah. Will they – when I can't see that in the West, but right. speaking of the East, you mentioned the All Star. I agree. There's no way in the world that Damian Lillard should have been a starter. No, right. way. no way in the world. With how the Bucks have been playing, is no way. I get it. They have a good record and all that, but no way in the world. Dame has not been Dame outside of that one game winner. Mm. We really haven't seen Dame time. No, you was out balling, but do you feel? Because is everybody is saying it in the East. You feel Trey Young was an All Star stud? No. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Ruben about this earlier. No, he 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 tried to make the case that Trey Young was a snub. Uh, I, I I don't feel that way. I think that they got it right. I think the Knicks deserve two All Star star uh, All Star players on the on the roster, and they got Julius Randle, who's gonna go out, and so he may get the the nod to be the uh, substitute for him, anyways, right? Um, but. The, the list as it was constructed was perfect. I think Donovan Mitchell deserved it. I saw him his name on there. He's he's a guy who actually quietly deserves MVP conversation because he's held that team afloat without Evan Mobley and Darius Garland. They've been winning games in spite of their absence with that guy leading the charge. He's been great. So um, and so he's been so well played so well that the Cavs know they, that he doesn't want to be there and they're refusing to trade him anyways because he's just too good. <laughs> they're like, well, I don't care. Like, we're just going to hold on to him. Um, so, you know, I, I think that Mitchell has been incredible. So, yes, he deserves it over Trey Young. Um, who else? We have Tyrese Maxey definitely deserves it over Trey Young. He's been one one of the key cogs for the Philadelphia 76ers. And right now he's snapping as the Jazz. Right now I think he has, like, almost 30 points in the, uh, in the second quarter of that game. He's an incredible. He's been a rising player and deserves it. And he plays winning basketball. He, the, at the end of the day, I could go over every name and why they deserve it over Trey Young, but the reality is Trey Young doesn't deserve it because Trey Young is putting up numbers on a team that's losing a bunch of games, and it's in large part because of him because he doesn't defend anything. He can't defend anything. He can't. He's terrible defensively, and we've heard all the rumors in the world about that team historically since he's been there where he's been a part of the problem. John Collins wanted to get out of there because he didn't like playing with him. Um, you know, the previous coach, Nate McMillan, and him bump heads. He's had uh, – and Lloyd Pierce also bumps head, bumped heads with him as well. So as two coaches – in a run bumped head with you. Now Snyder's over there. Snyder's staying awful quiet about you, right? And we know you guys dropped a little leak about, you know, you want to go play with Wemby, like it's going to solve all your problems, and it won't. You know what I mean? So he doesn't defend anything. He is a super talented player, super talented offensive player, great offensive player, right? A system within in and of himself. Um, but he doesn't deserve it over a Jalen Brown, Paolo, over um, any of the guys that, we, we, that are on that list, right? So And bam. And certainly not Ben, who's a defensive player of the year candidate um, over there. So, yeah, but you can't, you're not even – you don't even have a winning record. Like, you just have super, super Nova numbers to get, to merit an all-star appearance. If you don't have – you're not going to be in the winning record conversation. And he doesn't on either front, in my opinion. So, I know he's been good. I know he had that, that 30 and 10 stretch, you know, all for a whole – maybe a, a month or <laughs> like two weeks. But I, I don't see how he deserves it or anybody on that list who have contributed to winning in major ways. That's what's always funny is with these snub conversations because it's like, you're going to have to take somebody off. And I don't see right. who's taking off that list. And the same thing in the West. Granted, AD and the Lakers don't have a winning record. Well, they're 500 now. But AD's numbers have been astronomical. That's the AD that we've all wanted. It just hasn't produced 
disappointed. It hasn't yeah. produced in the winning, but that's the yeah. AD that everybody has been pleading to see, but it just didn't produce anything. You're not, you're not getting rid of Kawhi. Stop it. Steph, astronomical numbers, just hasn't produced winning. So I wouldn't take Steph off. D book, no, we're not doing we're not doing the disrespect. Anthony Edwards, that's a top team in the West. Number one yep. seed, Carl Anthony Towns. Like we we've seen this too many times. If you're a number one seed, a top three seed, you typically get two players. Yeah. They yep. gave it to Carl Anthony Towns. I'm sorry, I'm not giving it to Bonus. I'm not giving it to Fox. Yes, you have a winning record, but Carl Anthony Towns is on the number one seed of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And we all, if we be honest, do not want to see Rudy Gobert. That's not the second, that's not the second person that we want the Timberwolves to have. So exactly. and Paul George, again, one of the top teams in the West. Yeah. You won't have to give it to Paul George. You're not giving it to really Harden. So no. Typical, typical conversations, man. Like right. every year, when you talk about that. Who are you taking off the list? It's easy to be like, oh, this person should have been in the the All Star game. Who are you taking off now? Right. You can't transition to football. Of course. By the way, yo, for those that's watching, for those that's checking us in, yo, there will be a bonus emergency episode maybe this weekend. WNBA has been going crazy. Free agency has been free agenting. Real good, man. Skylar Diggins over in Seattle. Woo, boy. It's going to be an emergency pod. We're going to have to talk about it, but we're going to get into the NFL talk. We ain't going to dive in. We're not going to dive in to the Super Bowl predictions and, you know, really getting into the nitty gritty of the mm -hmm. of the game. But we're going to talk football. We had some stuff happen. Mike McDonald got hired and then Quinn got hired to the commanders with talks. Of hiring Chip Kelly as the OC. What was the, yeah, I don't know about that one. What was your your uh initial thoughts towards these hirings? I love it for Mike McDonald in Seattle. That's gonna probably that's be nice. Yeah, that's nice. They're gonna be an elite defense again. I concern for Baltimore what they do. Um, if they can continue that elite defense without Mike McDonald, yeah. but what was it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Seattle hire is predictable. Uh, Mike McDonald going there is a nice fit, especially defensive by the head coach right behind Pete Carroll. And Mike McDonald was cooking over there in Baltimore. That defense played well all throughout the playoffs. It wasn't their fault they lost. It was Lamar's fault. So uh, he, deserved every, every, he deserves the hiring opportunity and the opportunity to go coach in Seattle, a very stable situation with a quarterback in place already, with receivers in place already, with talent all over the place, and defensively they have talent. So – it, it's a great situation for him. It made a lot of sense to take that job. Um, the Redskins situation is interesting. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the, the the commandos. Uh, that situation is the situation is interesting. So I I I uh, you know them moving forward um, with Dan Quinn and obviously talking about Chip Kelly coming in. It makes me feel like they're gonna go after uh, Jaden Daniels because Chip Kelly's repertoire and his 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 resume. He's coached Mike Vick. Right. And so I feel like a mobile quarterback and that spread offense, like they, they try to run with Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel and um, the other, the young receiver as well. They got a young receiver that's good from Penn State, like Dotson, um, too. I think that that might be the way they go. And so it, it's, 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 they're kind of telling on themselves. They're telling you right now that they're going to go with Daniels uh, as the number two quarterback and that may will fall to three. Uh, and that means that the Patriots will probably take them. So, um, it's really, really interesting to see how that all pans out, obviously. But I think that, you know, that has draft implications going after guy Chip Kelly. That's the rumor, right? And if they do that, that would be interesting. But Dan Quinn, this is probably his last chance to be a head coach in the NFL. He had one before in Atlanta, eh, iffy, right? I think he's been around the NFL for a long, long time. So I think this opportunity here, he has to make it work. You have, uh, like I, I've been talking about the Washington, you know, commandos and on these podcasts left and right and for them you know they have top three, you know i think it was five top 100 picks they got all the draft capital in the world they got all the draft capital in the world they got all the money money in the world to go spend in free agency so if he can't feel the competitive team competitive roster here and they can't make it to the playoffs and be the second best team in this division at some point and then eventually hopefully the first for their kid for their sake 
uh, he's out of there. So he's probably got three years, if I look at it, like three years to really make something shake um, over there. But that's time, and we'll see what happens. That's that's an eternity in the NFL. Um, so we'll see what happens. He's in a great situation with that number two overall pick, and we'll see if he can make it all work. But it's an it's an okay hire. It's an okay hire. It didn't it didn't blow me away when I saw it. You know what I mean? I thought they could have. They could have gone after the guy, Ben Johnson. You know, that scared me a lot more, the way he coaches offense. And if you look at the NFL and the way it's trended, offensive head coaches have the most success and have been in the Super Bowl more often than not, and it's an offensive league. So hiring a defensive guy is very against the grain. It doesn't mean that you can't win with him if you have a quarterback. I mean, City of Stroud did it with D'Amico Ryans, but it's just, you know, it's the, it's the lay of the land. So it's interesting to see them go against the grain and go Dan Quinn, um, who's okay. Who's okay? You know, he struggled over in Dallas with all that talent, that defense falling apart. So interesting that they made that hire. Uh, very interesting. Makes me feel like they makes me feel like their first option was taken off the board, maybe even their second option, and they went to Dan Quinn. It's kind of what it feels like to me. You know, so wouldn't be surprised if he's gone eventually. Hey, Dan Quinn did the right thing, man. The, the house is burning down. You got to get out the house. <laughs> yep. get out. He got out. He know that he know what's going to happen in Dallas. You got Jerry Jones talking about we going all in next year. We not rebuilding. We going all in with Dak Prescott. It's going to be the same result. It is going to be the same result. And hey, might as well go down. If he don't succeed over there with the commandos. Exactly. I got this. I got a head coaching salary. I'm you got good. A bag. And your bag is guaranteed no matter what. So yeah, I be, t- I be telling people like being getting to that level of, of coaching and in, in pro sports, yo, you get fired. So what? So what? Yo, your money's guaranteed, bro. Like people could say whatever they want about you. You know how much money you've made ten times. Your your family set. You can walk away if you want. Take an assistant job somewhere else. You're good. You're good. So it's it's a good situation. It's a good situation either way. Yeah, you know they rotate. Selfish, selfish perspective. They rotate with the assistant coaching jobs. Like all right, I just go back to. Be an assistant coach, and that's right. decent money too. So I'll just keep doing that. Have a good season, and as a white man in the NFL, you have a good two seasons as an OC, a DC. You'll get back in the conversation. They'll let you back in. Always. Come on, we know you're. We know you were four and twelve and two and sixteen. But come on, we're gonna, <laughs> you might have learned a lesson somehow in the last two years. Come on, we'll give you another shot. If Jill, we'll give you Jill, an interview. If Jaden Daniels falls on his face and isn't the player he's supposed to be, he'll be fired. That's just the way it's going to go. He's, he's, you tie yourself to the performance of your of your first overall pick at that quarterback. You don't get to see two guys come in. Eber, that's why what's happening with Eberflus is so surprising that he gets to see two guys, right? Because they're probably going to take Caleb. They get to see two guys through. And so, and I still think it's weird that he's there. And, and, and it just it just screams to me as a red flag. And it just makes you feel like they're going to go. They're going to keep Justin Fields. There's a part of it that's still keeping that in the back of my mind. They might keep him and shock the NFL world. Because once a year, we get one team that does something shocking in the NFL draft. And that will probably be the most shocking thing that could happen. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, Chicago, another one of them teams. Just not- and and he, if he goes there, he's his career is going to go in the toilet. I'm talking about Williams. Like He won't be the player he's supposed to be over there. It's not going to happen for him over there. I just don't see. Did they hire an offensive coordinator yet? Did I missed it over in Chicago? I think they're still in talks trying to figure out who they're going to hire. I think. Yeah, they're still waiting because they, they don't want to give it. They, they don't want it to be a tell on who they're going to keep or who they're going to draft, obviously, which I don't think it, it matters because, like, it's oh. very, did they hire somebody and I missed it? They hired an offensive line coach. I think the Chicago Bears are hiring Thomas Brown, the former Carolina Panthers offensive coordinator. Nope. They hired somebody as the passing game coordinator. They didn't hire OC yet. <laughs> they play his gamesmanship. That's all it is. It's gamesmanship. They hired Cliff Kingsbury at Kingsbury to tell themselves because that, that's a uh, Caleb Williams uh, offensive coordinator from this past year. So, and they, the offense didn't look very good over there. So I don't know why they would do that, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You know, maybe I'm reading it on Shane Waldron as OC. Oh, they did hire Shane Waldron, the guy from Seattle. He's a good one. They they ran a good offense over in Seattle. So yeah, they they hire Shane Waldron. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's hard to know what they're gonna do, what that means. Like if they, you know, yeah. we'll see. But keeping Eberflus was just weird. That was just weird. So we'll see. 
Chicago's another one of them teams, you know. You never hey, really he know. might he might have a, a tape on polls. That's why <laughs> he probably does. He probably does. It gotta be something like that. You mentioned that Ravens defense. They did their job. They shut out the Chiefs in that second half, and they still the Ravens still ain't get it done. Yeah. Lamar, twenty or thirty seven, two hundred seventy two yards, a hundred. One touchdown, one interception. He was sacked four times. Yeah. They only had 16 rush attempts. Eight of them were to Lamar. Now, on the regular season, they led the league in rushing attempts at 31 and rushing yards at 156 and a half yards per game. Did Lamar and the Ravens lose their identity against the Chiefs? I've seen a lot of that. I mean, I think I've seen a lot of that talk, and that's – a fair point. I think that that's certainly something people could say. Uh, I could say it's certainly a contributing factor to why they lost. They they didn't run the ball much. There weren't many design runs with Lamar Jackson at all. Um, and I don't think it was because they felt like they couldn't get it or go get to those looks because the Chiefs defense was was that good. And the Chiefs defense is really really good. Um, but I do think they lost their way a bit. I think that they try to fall into um, dispelling the narrative about Lamar Jackson and they try to have him throw his way into the Super Bowl. Um, to almost gain the respect of the public and gain the respect of all people who doubted him. And they got they started to buy into the narrative about him, this game being the biggest game of his career because he could dispel all the, the narratives about him out there. And it cost them. It cost them. I don't, I think they, the offensive game plan was terrible. Um, you know, and I, I don't think Tom Munkin's like a particularly great offensive coordinator. I think they have a lot of talent left and right. Um, but I just felt like they targeted Isaiah, um, Zay Flowers, a lot in that football game and he's great great young receiver but he's a young guy and you have some other guys in your team Bateman and, and Duvernay and other guys and you know and they weren't always hoping but you you have to try to get the spread the ball around if you're going to drop back and throw it it can't just be I'm dropping back and I'm looking for Zay Flowers every time um not exactly the best way to go about playing offensive football so yeah I think they lost their, their identity a bit in the game because they were trying to fall into the whole narrative thing but the reality is the Ravens look like they were scared, and the Chiefs look battle-tested. The Chiefs just literally put those guys in a headlock and literally jumped the life out of them to end that football game. And that's what champions do. They make they make enough right plays over and over again to where it debilitates you, and it just takes the life out of you as a football team. And the Ravens just had a bunch of turnovers to, to throw into triple coverage by Lamar Jackson because he's – I don't know what he thinks he's doing there or the dive, you know, the dive into the end zone by Zay Flowers, which was just crazy. That punch out by Sneed. So like, you know, they, they definitely fell victim to the hype of the moment and they definitely did. And it's unfortunate because like I said, it would have been a big deal for black people before I pulled that one off, regardless of what people on TikTok think about what I said, it, you know, I, I, it, it would have been a big deal for a quarterback who looks like him and a quarterback who plays the way he does to win a Super Bowl. But it's a pipe dream for now. And it, may ne- and it, it just kind of feels like it's never going to happen. It just kind of feels that way. Um, it just feels like he's never going to win one. Um, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't know how they go upgrade and get a bona fide wide receiver one for him. Uh, you know, it, that's the tough thing about it. I think he has enough offensive weapons to have gotten it done. And if he hasn't gotten to them to this point in his career where he's in his prime, I just don't know that it'll ever happen because you're, you're, your prime is aligned with Pat Mahomes or Joe Burrow. There's always going to be some a killer in the way, always. So and that, that can throw the ball with precision all over the field, do what you can't. So, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm very skeptical now that he'll ever win one. But they're going to be a great team. I guess that's fun for Ravens fans. They can enjoy that while they do whatever dances that are big over there at the same time. Yo, this is always one of the greatest shows when Greg be in my notes without actually seeing my notes. Because the next <laughs> thing I want to talk about is between the Lions and the Ravens, who has the best chance of actually returning back to the divisional round? But before we even get to that, though, I, I do want to speak on Lamar in this regard. Of I agree, it was like they were trying to change the narrative. But in this case... This is a situation where it's like, yo, we just trying to win. I don't, I don't care what shot thing. If I had to run for 165 yards, I ran for 165 yards. Mm-hmm. I do not care. Why were they trying to, like, have them pack 37 pass attempts? Insane. What got shot here was running the ball, run the mm-hmm. ball. And Lamar, even himself, 
We can't put this all on Todd Munkin. We saw too many times, step back, pat the ball, pat the ball, pat the ball. He done pat it four or five times. Ain't nobody getting open. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. Pat Mahomes, and maybe that's me wanting too much out of Lamar. But I think he's in that conversation of greatness. But Pat Mahomes, after a while, he's not known for running, but Pat Mahomes going to make it happen some way, somehow. Ain't none of y'all getting open? All right, we're going to figure it out. Joe Burrow, ain't none of y'all getting open? We're going to figure it out. Big Ben in his heyday, we're going to figure it out. Bruh, why was you trying to force the throw? I get it. Lamar is just, oh, he's not a passer. He's a runner. Yeah, I could kick rocks because if I make it to the Super Bowl and win. That's all that matters. That's all that ma I won. That's all yeah. that matters. Y'all can say I all I y'all can say I can't pass, but y'all gotta also say I'm a champion. Mm -hmm. Point blank here. Cause if they made it, I feel like they would have beat they would have beat the 49ers. But yeah. we don't get to see that. We don't get to see that. We all wanted to see that rematch again. We don't get to see it. And obviously, more than likely, I'm not betting against Pat Mahomes two weeks in a row. So we'll get to our picks next right. week. Right. But I'm not betting against Pat Mahomes two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. We seen it Eagles last year. Great season. They make it to the Super Bowl. Everybody is talking about they're going to be back. Mm -hmm. They're stacked. They're loaded. Mm -hmm. They re-up. They didn't. They didn't even sniff the Super Bowl. Detroit Lions, sad to say, did a Detroit Lions type of thing. <laughs> Granted, uh, I personally, I have no problem with Dan Campbell. This is who he was all season, going on fourth down. Only issue I had, at halftime, he should have went for that fourth down too. Go get a touchdown. That might have mm -hmm. put the nail in the coffin instead of taking a field goal on that one. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I got no problem with Dan Campbell. Lions, this is way more than anybody expected this season. Cool, great. Out of these two teams, though, who's likely you think to actually return and have this type of season because we see it all the time. But the yeah, reason why we're all excited because the Lions ain't been in that position in 32 years, so it don't happen every year. Yeah, <laughs> God, I mean, I, I, I trust Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh more to figure it out. Granted, it's unlikely they get back. I think the Bengals will be healthy next year, obviously, and they'll be, you know, they'll they'll be back and in the way. Um, and who knows if you know the uh, Deshaun Cosby figures it out, maybe he gets it rolling, and the, ba the Browns make a run for it next year because uh, they're due. They're due with that big contract of his. They're due for him to make to take them to the promised land. But um, I, I think Detroit is is really iffy. Uh, I mean that. Um, not just because of Detroit, but also because even though they've got all this talent, this young talent over there, and Jared Groff's still in place, and they'll probably extend him and everything like that. You, you, the layout of the NFC is so much more, it's so so much trickier. Uh, you know, you, you look at you know just the, the division alone. You know, with the with the Packers and their their ascension and where they are, in Jordan Love, and they're gonna invest in Jordan Love and continue to pour in assets around him. Um, you know. I don't know. Like they could, they could be better than the the Lions next year for real. With all those young receivers they got over there and him, and so they know they got their answer the quarterback. They're gonna really go all in, and so they'll be in the way um, in their division too. And and I just, you know, I think that with a guy like Campbell, yeah, you made it this year. It's cute. Everyone's happy for you. You were the, the funny, the, the the spunky upstart. But next year you don't make it to the uh, you don't make it back to where you were, or even close, or even just to the playoffs. You're fired. You're fired. You're going to lose your job. I'm telling you, you're going to lose your job. Um, you know, with his, you know, with his decision to not kick that field goal when they were down by three in the fourth quarter midway through, the only problem I had with it was the reason why I felt like you needed it is because they literally scored like 20, whatever it was, 24 points unanswered straight on you, right, in a row. And you just needed points. You just needed to get something on the board there. Right to give yourself just a chance. Just to stop the bleeding. Just stop the bleeding. You're just you're hemorrhaging. You're hemorrhaging in that in that game. And so, to to go for it there, even though you didn't. And, and here's the thing: you didn't. You can't. You can't tell me that's who you are. You didn't go for it at before half. Like like you said before half, you didn't go for it. You you took the points. So you knew you could take the points. Like you know it's in you to do that. You have to think better. That's that that, that choice there because 
being down by two scores is a big thing. You have to go for the onside kick. If you're down by a score, you give yourself a chance to, to just score and touch it down and get back in. I think they scored. They scored. So, you know, just a bad look um, to go out that way. At that point, you want to extend the game, right? Instead of extending the game, you actually accelerated it by going for it and not getting it, right? And it just played all just they just really shifted all the momentum into the 49ers favor. So I know it's like the whole fortune favors the bull thing, but it's, it's a catch twenty two because you could get you can get screwed making a choice like that, and that's exactly what happened to them. And then after the game, they tell the tell the players, you know, we, we may never get here again. Yeah, you 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 probably won't. <laughs> you probably won't. That's the thing. You know, you probably won't. So. It's, that's what makes the decision even worse is the thing I'm saying. Yeah, you look at the NFC, we already saw, as you said, the Packers. You got San Fran, obviously, should be good again next year. Yeah, they will be. The Rams, yeah. if they're healthy, they'll be should better. Figure, should figure something out. Right. Seattle, Mike yep. McDonald over there, should yep. figure something out. Then, of course, you got the, the up and down NFC lease. Dallas, yeah. Philly, those two should be back in that same conversation. Now, whether they actually win in the end, that's a whole other discussion. But you can mess around. You might not even win your division. Detroit, exactly. you might. And same thing with Baltimore. This was the this was the best chance, I think, for them to, to try to at least make it to the Super Bowl. Because Joe Burrow's coming back healthy next year. Yeah. The Cleveland yeah, Browns, that's an elite. That's an elite defense right there. They just, Joe Flacco was Joe Flacco in, in the playoffs, as we all expected. He wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to have that same type of run to no Super Bowl. But that's a top-tier defense right there. Buffalo, Josh Allen always going to be in that mix. Miami, will they be something legitimate? Probably not, but they're going to be a playoff team more than likely. Nope. A-Rod, A-Rod coming back should be a possible playoff team. We'll say that for the summer. Cause that's a whole nother. <laughs> that's something Miles will be here for, I'm sure. That's a whole other thing. The only in the AFC South you got now, you got to worry about Trevor Lawrence, and you got to worry about CJ Trout. That's right. That's yeah, right. This was the best opportunity, opportunity for both teams to actually make it to the Super Bowl, whether they won it or not. This was probably one of the best years for them to make it, where you had teams dealing with injuries, you had teams not playing what they expected. Philly didn't play up to expectations. All these different type of things. That's what happened. You see, Pat Mahomes is that guy. Pat Pat Mahomes is that guy. I'm gonna list some stats for you, Greg, and then I'm gonna ask you, where do you rank Pat Mahomes all time with quarterbacks? Because th this man's resume is is Incredible. crazy. Incredible. Playoffs. Pat Mahomes is 14 and three right now, up to this point in playoff record. Peyton Manning. Has 14 wins his whole career. Brett Favre, 13 11 in his career in the playoffs. Drew Brees, 9 and 9 in the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers, 11 and 10 in the playoffs. Right now, Mahomes is already top 10 in passing yards for playoffs, and he already is sixth right now in playoff passing touchdowns. Seven years in, in his career, only he's been playing for six. Where do you rank him amongst the all-time quarterbacks? I mean, <laughs> he, he's our, he's already, you know, at the very least at two. At the very least, I mean, I know that the Tom Brady, uh, you know, you know truthers are going to be up in arms if I put him over to Tom Brady. Not that I care. Um, I, I think that you know Patrick Mahomes is the the best quarterback I've ever seen in my entire life. I really believe that. I you know, and it, it's the level of accomplishment so early in his career um, for him to have been in four of the last five Super Bowls and to potentially to, to potentially win three of the last five. And, you know, if he wins this one, he'll have three. That, that's remarkable. I mean, is there, and it's something that's going to continue. It's just, you know, this is the worst offense he's ever had. And he still makes plays when it timely plays. He makes the right play every time. His ability to – he is more cerebral than he's ever been in his entire career in terms of reading defenses. In that Ravens game, he just made the right choice over and over and over again. And it's so funny. It's like, you know, as, as a coach, you you tell you tell your team all the time, like, 
what's more demoralizing to a team than a great defensive team is a team that makes the right play offensively every single time. They make the right choice, the right decision every time. Those things compound. It can just demoralize opponents. And so you add that to his arm talent already, and you know they're going to get him a bona fide number one at some point on the line again. They're going to get him another good wide receiver to play with, especially as Travis Kelsey ages and fades away. Um, it's scary how long this dynasty can continue. So for me, you know, when you factor in the multitude of ways that he can beat you, because obviously Tom was going to beat you with his mind and beat you with his, his ability to throw the ball, obviously, to all parts of the field. He was an incredible passer, precision passer. Um, but you, when you factor in that, that Patrick Mahomes has that, that, those abilities and the ability to scramble and make plays with his feet and improv like nobody else that we've ever really seen, uh, you've got to go with Pat Mahomes. And then the the ingenuity of the offense, like with Reed and what they do and the lateral passes that they they put in their playbook and just the the, the way he continues to evolve off in offense, to have that at your disposal, to have a weapon like Patrick Mahomes at your disposal as a coach, you know, they, they can win for real. I mean, the next – they can win seven of the next ten Super Bowls, for real. And, he, and, and to, in my opinion, he doesn't have to win more Super Bowls than Tom Brady – for him to be considered the best because he's already the best in my eye. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen. He's the GOAT, in my opinion, already. Um, so regardless of Super Bowl number, I think that this guy is the best combination of pure skill, talent, and football IQ all in one. Um, and also leadership, you know, like to, to pull this season out from where it was and to win in spite of the Taylor Swift uh, noise. To win in spite of the Taylor Swift noise is really, really impressive. And they're going to win the Super Bowl. So, um, I got with the dad go. bod at that. With the dad, with the dad bod, yeah, like to run around like that with that. He's a real Texas guy, you know. You got Canes there, you got Waterburger. Waterburger will get you a dad bod. You be all right. I, I don't even blame him, bro. I don't even mad at him when I saw the when I saw the, the, the picture on NFL Films because the Waterburger is something different. Y'all don't know about Waterburger, bro. That it, it's different. It's different. <laughs> so so they got a lot of good food over there at his disposal. But in all seriousness, he's the best quarterback I ever seen for all the reasons I've said. And you're going to post it. No, you're going to post it. And people are going to get upset. But if you guys listen to the podcast, I make a compelling re- argument as to why I feel that way. And we'll see if people actually agree. If they, you know, if they hear it. If, they, if they're not lazy. We, we all know y'all are lazy. So, whatever. <laughs> hey, man. I would say Pat Mahomes as of right now, I'll maybe put him three or four. I still got to put okay. Montana, Montana okay. up there just off That's of fair. Um, Montana, people forget that Joe won two Super Bowls. He won two Super Bowls before Jerry Rice got there. Yeah. So my, Montana was Montana was like that. So Montana Brady, and then I probably it's up for debate after that. Pat Mahomes, but I don't think by any chance when it's all said and done, Pat Mahomes is going to be. There's going to be no discussion. It's not going to be a debate. It's it's not going to be something that we could actually debate when it's all said and done. Because how did his contract is set up too? They can continue building around Pat Mahomes, and all you got to do is just manipulate the money, manipulate the money, turn it into a signing bonus, and they could keep building. Trust and believe. This summer, they're probably going to get some more better wide receivers. They're going to figure out what they're doing to help aid with Travis Kelsey if he decides to retire or if he stays. Maybe you get a dual tight end set where he's not the main guy, where you could get him off the field sometime. Whatever they got to do, maybe they – oh, he don't practice. He just comes for the games, kind of like what Gronk was doing. Hey, we just need you at the games. You smart enough. You know the offense. You know how to read deep. We just need you at the games. They could do that because Kelsey, maybe he saw Maybe he saw what Greg said. Maybe the Swifties went and sent the video because the playoffs, Kelsey has been. Incredible. He's rejuvenated. He yeah. he got the fountain of youth or something like right. big time, big game. Travis Kelsey. So this might be where he could just hey, just show up and play. You know, don't do the practicing, don't do that because you're that good, and we just need you in big moments. Travis Kelsey's been up and down all season, and Pat Mahomes still figured it out. So we just need you in certain moments. Third and seven, run this route, get open. That's all. I just need you hearing it. We in the end zone. We in the end zone. I need you to get over for this touchdown. That's it. That's how good this team is set up. And trust me, they're going to retool. They're going to get better. The defense, 
elite. This is the best defense he's ever had. And now let's say they're able to keep most of this defense together. Steve Spagnola is no more open is open, so he's going to return back. He's going to stay with Kansas City. This could be in the, next ten, in the next 10 years. This could be <laughs> – they could win three to five Super Bowls easy. Easy money with how the team is set up. Yeah. Capital facts because we, we mentioned it. And, you know, the Swifties on YouTube and TikTok didn't like what you said, but it's Travis <laughs> Kelsey. It's Travis Kelsey the GOAT amongst tight ends. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, what did what was the record he had? He had, I believe, it was like seven thousand yard seasons in a row, going on eight. I think he, I think this year he didn't get it because he sat out the last game of the year. But to to do that, I mean, in this, in addition to the winning of Super Bowls, I think he's got obviously got he's got two. Um, he, he's the best receiving tight end we have ever seen. The best receiving tight end and. He all his all around game was great. He's able to block at a high level. He doesn't get hurt. I mean, up until this year, we hadn't even heard about the guy getting injured. He, I don't think he'd missed a game up until this year. Um, so he is he is special. I mean, he is a generational tight end, a tight end, um, and he's gonna go down that way. I think he's the best one I've ever seen, just because of the consistency of his availability. Gronk got hurt. You know, Gronk would get hurt. Gronk would miss games. Obviously, when Gronk was there, he was a a freak of nature. Oh my goodness. And he had the killer next to him too. Uh well literally and figuratively um too. So they there was a two headed monster um as well. A murderous duo if you will. Uh, <laughs> so so um no nah, but I, I think in all seriousness I think Travis Kelsey was the was the best uh is the best and will go down as the greatest tight end ever and I think that most tight ends of all time would probably agree um, that that's the case because of the consistency over time. And he's been doing this for a long time at a high level. So I'm going to say, yeah, facts, facts. Hey, y'all know, y'all know I like my stats here. I'm a geek when it comes to sports. <laughs> I, I love looking at the stats, the analytics, not to say that this play is better. I don't go that far, you know, like in the NBA, they be using the analytics in the wrong way oftentimes. But check, check the stats on this. All-time playoff receiving yards. Of course, none other than Jerry Rice at 2,245 yards. But you know who's second? At the tight end position, not wide receiver. At the tight end position, Travis Kelsey, 1,810 yards. When you talk about NFL playoff touchdown receptions, 22, Jerry Rice. Who's second? Travis Kelsey. At 19, he might mess around and get that in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Receptions, mm -hmm. all time receiving in the playoff. He's the leader now. 156 catches. Jerry Rice is now number two at 151. Yeah. Yeah. At tight end. He's doing this at tight end. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Hands catches too. He he's a hands catcher. He catches the ball away from his body. He is he's elite, man. He's he's gonna have a big game on on you know in a what next week. He's gonna have a big game. You just know he is. Like it's just you can count on it. He's just that great. He's a big time performer. When it matters most, he comes he comes to play at a high level. And in spite of all the noise that went on around him to play well, he's got like a who's the guy we we I don't we you know we we make a big deal about here in New York and Norris on oh, name is name is factor to him right because he said oh we're gonna go win and he went and got went and won and he made a big deal about from what I understand he was ass but they make a big deal about him now nah, Joe right? name Joe <laughs> Miles don't like to hear it but I've said plenty of times Joe name is overrated and Joe name should not be in no Hall of Fame one time he he guaranteed to win the Super Bowl and outside of that. The rest of the career was booty. He looked, mm -hmm. he looked like he looked like me playing quarterback. Nah, <laughs> bro, that should be no Hall of Fame. Cause you you was right one time. Come on, bro. You, it, was in New York. New York. it was in New winning York. In New York. It's winning in New York that'll do it for you, bro. Like you wanna you wanna be idolized and, and immortalized forever. Win in New York City. Look what Jim Dunson's doing in New York City, and they're they're ready to build a statue and do it already. You know, just a couple successful seasons. When in New York, it's nothing like it. 
You can pull uh, it off. The MVP chance tonight. Man, Crazy. Can off. Hey, Crazy. Man, you know, what, what happened tonight, you know, 40-point game. MVP. MVP. He it, I'm happy you for know, him. I know that's got to be great, going up in the area to then be an yeah. MSG and getting chance. When that was, that's where you grew up and you get a chance in the mecca of basketball, MSG. You're uh, not six foot five. You're not six foot eight. You're not Kobe. You're not Ron. You're not super athletically gifted. You're a regular, regular dude, six one at most, getting to it. Uh-huh. I know I Becky Hammond. Style. Becky Hammond is like, you're not going to be able to win a championship with him. And you're probably right. You don't really win championships with small oh, guard as your as your number one option. Yeah. But if you put the right players around him, JB, they could get a chip, and JB would be the MVP. I don't care what, what nobody yeah, said. JB sure. would be the finals MVP. I'm rooting for him. You know, Team Smurf out here. I'm a smaller guard, so I'm rocking with JB. I love left-handed guards too, so he's left-handed. Gets nasty with it. You not stopping Jay. He got the post game too. I love Jalen Brunson's game. Cold. Cold. Absolutely love Jalen Brunson's game. We're gonna end off with this because we able it's just me and you. So we could be flexible. We could do we could go from football to basketball to baseball to wrestling. We could we could be flexible <laughs> with this draw right here. We could, we could be flexible oh, with this draw right here. We don't have anybody holding us down. So we could go back and forth. We we good like that. <laughs> we mentioned, you know, the Ravens look shook. Yeah. The shook ones. They they were shook. They wasn't yeah. ready. And part of it could have been like they just ain't never been, they haven't been there before. They ain't mm-hmm. know what to do. Obviously, Pat Mahomes and the crew was like, Y'all was doubting us talking about I gotta go on the road. That don't mean nothing. I'm gonna come in your trap and run it how I want to run it. That <laughs> it is what it, I've been here. I know it. On the NBA side, which team do you think like the inexperience in the youth might be a problem for a time when it comes to the playoffs. The Minnesota Timberwolves or the OKC Thunder? Because both teams young, yeah. are pretty young and don't have that playoff. Well, Minnesota got some playoff experience, but still, yeah. like a deep run. It, I, I'm going to say OKC because at least the Timberwolves have Mike Conley as a veteran there that in the starting lineup that can kind of settle things down. And we saw him make big shots last year in postseason play. Um, and I think that at the end, we're just taking another year, step forward in year two, or excuse me, and which, what is it? Year four for him, um, for year five, year four or five, four, I believe yeah. it is. Um, but yeah, I think because of the veteran presence they have on the team all in all, like with a guy like Mike Conley and Cat's a veteran. Cat's been in the league for a long time. He's unserious, so we don't look at him that way. He's un- he's unserious, uh, but he, we, you know he is a veteran. So you look at a team like OKC, they're young, man. I mean, Shea has playoff experience, and he, I don't worry about him. He can go any time of the year. He's ready. Superstar, superstar guy, um, want number one option guy on a championship team. That good, cool, but. Chet's young and Chet's playing and giving big, big minutes. And, you know, uh, Lou Dort isn't young anymore. He's been around. I don't think I consider him a young player, but it's like Josh Giddy is young. Josh Giddy's a young guy. Um, probably not as young as you'd like to be, uh, but young. Uh, but young, a young guy in, in the league. And so I, I think that for him, you know, in, those, in that core of players they've got over there, the, the, it's a lot to ask for them to win a playoff series against a Lakers team, for example, where they get like a low seed and Lakers have to play them. Like the Lakers are, fa- are favored by me because they got all the experience on their side. If they don't, something crazy doesn't happen where LeBron isn't a Laker or something like that. Cause we never know. But you know, in all, in all seriousness, I, I think that the OKC's lack of experience and youth is already showing his head in certain games this season. Defensively, they have their warts. They're not there yet. Um, and I think at the playoffs is a whole different game. So I really think that for them, because of their lack of playoff experience as a group, uh, I, I worry about that. I worry about them more so in a big moment than, you know, the Timberwolves, for example. Yeah, looking at the standings, we, we're going to end off. But Minnesota is a 34 and 14. <laughs> OKC is 33 and 15. The Clippers are 31 and 15. Yeah. Denver is 33 and 16. 
I can honestly see both of them dropping and being the third and the fourth seed, and the Clippers and Denver actually ending up with the top two seeds. Clippers are eight and two over the last ten. They figured it out. Ty Lu, give all the credit to Ty Lu. Ty Lu has figured it out. Has got them all on the same page. Got Russell Westbrook dancing with James Harden during games. Ty Lu, shout out to Ty Lu for figuring that out with that squad. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George playing Dagner every game. Which again, that's Ty Lu. He said it in the summertime on all the smoke. He called them out. Yo, it would be our season would be different if they would play in the regular season. Yep. They play in the regular season, and it's a it's a complete difference. They're a top three seed. I think they get the number one seed. Denver will get the second seed. I'm still concerned about Denver, which we'll talk about later on down the line when we get towards the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because they chilling, because they, you know, the regular season don't matter to them. But mm-hmm. Jamal Murray. Yep. Roll Michael Porter there. Jr. To be expected. <laughs> to be expected. God doesn't pass. To be expected. And to your point, I don't want to have to pull out the old clips, but y'all was real upset when Greg was like Jamal Murray's in the top five in his position. That he isn't. That he isn't. I said he we're isn't. seeing it this year. Yeah, we're, right. see- we're seeing it this year. Jokic is carrying them, but nobody else is consistently showing up. You're That's supposed right. to be. You're supposed to be the Robin to his Batman, and right now you're looking more like Alfred on most nights. <laughs> on most really? nights. For and real, if though. they drop, though, for example, the 7, 8, 9, and 10 seed right now, the Pelicans, Mavericks, Lakers, and Utah. If they match up with the Lakers, the Lakers already beat them this year. The Lakers already, they came in OKC, I believe, and beat them. Mavericks, I don't know if in a seven-game series if they really, if OKC can stop Luka and Kyrie, a healthy Kyrie. I give them, I give them fits. It's gonna give them fits. I don't, I don't know. I am concerned about the OKC and their their youth. You look at the roster. I'm gonna just go down <laughs> go down the ages and <laughs> we can end it off, right? Shea, 25 years old, two playoff series, one with CP3, one with the Clippers. Cool. Josh Giddy, 21. Obviously, wishing age wasn't a number. You know, age wasn't a factor. <laughs> He must listen to a lot of Leah and R. Kelly, obviously. That's my <laughs> gotta be on his playlist. Oh Lou Dort, 24. Young. Old Room, Chet, 21. J. Will, 21. The other J. Will, 22. The Vet, Davis Bartons, 31. Isaiah Joe, 24. L. Waters, 26. Mm-hmm. Wiggins, 25. Kaysen Wallace, 20. Trey Mann, 22. They got one person on the squad that's 30 years old. They're going to lose in the first round. It's just the way it goes. Young team, but they don't pull it off, man. I mean, if they do, it's because Shea, Shea is special, and he is. But they're going to have to win in spite of their age. They're not going to win because of it, that's for sure. Uh, they, you know, age, being young in the playoffs, it doesn't always doesn't help you. Because it's, it's, it gets real cerebral in the playoffs. They know your sets and all that stuff. And defensively, Ooh. teams are locked in. So, even if they play Phoenix, Phoenix is starting to figure it out. Those oh, yeah. three, B book, Phoenix beat them. Kevin Durant and Bradley Bill actually playing. They figured it out. They yeah, best yeah. bet, honestly, where I think they get out the first round, they have to play another young team in the Kings. Because I don't yeah. think the I don't believe the Kings. If they don't get the right matchup, they're not getting out the first round again either. Mm-hmm. Don't believe it, but. You could believe in us, man. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, share, tell your grandmother, your uncle, your baby moms, tell your kids, 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 uncle, father, tell everybody. Share, subscribe, rate us five stars. We don't want to be here for a good time. We're trying to be here for a long time. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Bitch mob, we out. Peace. Peace.